morning, and thank you for inviting me to this show. So, when you read, well, okay, let's put this in context before we actually start with this uh, conversation. For the benefit of our viewers, can you give us a brief synopsis of the Czech of Shadows? The novel takes place in 1989 and uh, encompasses the journey of about 12 guerrillas from the People's Army who infiltrate South Africa from Botswana. They come into South Africa carrying a box, a trunk, which is full of material. It is this material, this box, that makes them a target of just about everybody. Mm. The corrupt uh, officials from within the South African circumstance who fear that they might be outed as traitors. And of course, it's also something that also attracts the attention of the Askaris who would want to, number one, get the guerrillas and kill them, number two, get to the contents of the box. And the box that we don't know of. <laughs> You delve into a subject matter and reality that a lot of South Africans haven't actually thought of. And I, and I say that with all due respect to, to a lot of South Africans. Mm. We understand the, the work of the liberation movements. We understand the work that they did in the training camps. But we've romanticized it a little bit mm. in many ways. Mm. But there was hard work and real training and real men and women that were offering up their lives. Absolutely. Number one, there's a, lo there's a big misconception in the country about exile in itself. Yeah. People seem to think that in the colloquialism of South Africa, it was all pop and place. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah. It was a very hard craft. But it's also, uh, there have been so many books and narratives and even movies that deal with the life of, of guerrillas, of exile, etc. And as you are saying, there's been this romanticization. So I try to take the layers. People are like onions. You know, mm. so many layers that need to be peeled off to get to the core, to get to the understanding that these consist of men and women who are just like you and me, with all the complexities of a human being, who can laugh, who can love, who can lie, who can cheat, who can also be uh, capable of great acts of bravery. Yeah. I want to touch on something else. Baby. Let's quickly talk about what you've just mentioned, because you've created a world where you quite effectively show both sides. Mm -hmm. And for me, I often wonder, when you are a writer and you're dealing with bits of your own reality, reality of South Africa, you want to you wanna find that balance. How Was it easy to find a balance? It's not easy to find a balance, but you've got to research and you've got to make sure that you don't come out with characters who are just like cardboard cutouts. Mm. You mm. must come out with, as I was saying earlier, real life, flesh and blood, men and women. And uh, I think it's in the research that you are then able to look at the evil that was done by the regime, by its representatives, but also look at some of the perfidy that prevailed within the ranks of, of the movement itself. Why do you enjoy making us feel so uncomfortable? <laughs> what is it about Manda Langa's writing style that makes us uncomfortable? When you, before this, you dealt with issues that were a, a fictitious island, but there was real realities there. Why yeah. do you enjoy making us so uncomfortable? Well, I, I would like people to think, I would like people to challenge themselves, to go deeper into issues and to know that what we see sometimes is not what we get. Mm. The metaphor of the... The, 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 the army, the, 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 the band of, uh, of men, what they're carrying. What is, what is the symbolism of that? The fact that they are willing to protect their lives to something that they have no clue. They have no clue what's mm. in what they're carrying. Well, I think the thing I was trying to portray was the undying, the real, real deep discipline that people have got, where they would be able to ferry something across the border, something that would cost their lives, but they would carry it nevertheless. And it speaks of the, that spirit of the invincibility of the human spirit. It speaks of the possibility for people to really go for broke and do things, even if they are not, a, they don't know, there's no reward for them. If you look at our materialistic world now, yeah. everybody is looking for a reward of sorts. Yeah. 
We've run out of uh, time, unfortunately, but I'm going to encourage everybody to go and pick up a copy. I do think it's going to be a conversation starter, something that you might want to do in your book clubs, wherever you are all over the country and internationally. Author, poet, uh, short storyteller, novelist, Manda Langa here in studio with us, talking to us about the texture of shadows. It was launched late last year, so it's fresh off the press. Go and get it. And let us know what you think if you've read it. Morning Live at SABC.ca.